Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad to have you all here today because today we have a very special review. I have here the 8 inch Bob Ross figure from NECA Toys. It's been one of my most anticipated figures in recent memory to finally have an American icon like Bob Ross in figure form and brought to us by our good friends at NECA who I completely trust to give a figure like this the attention and craftsmanship that it deserves. I picked this guy up from GameStop.com and cost me around $30 because it was the only place that had it in stock and available to ship. So if you wanted this figure as well, I suggest maybe look there first and maybe you can get it a little bit quicker. Taking a look at the packaging, we can see that it's a little bit different than what we're used to with other NECA figures because it's wider. We have a lot of accessories to go along with Bob Ross that completely emulates the scenes that he will provide when he would do his wonderful paintings on PBS. So in addition to the figure, we also get his easel. We also get a variety of brushes, palette knife. We get his canvas. And then we're also getting that wonderful, wonderful bucket they would use to clean the brushes. And we get this wonderful painting here which I believe is from season two of The Joy of Painting. Looking at the back of the box, we see just a few examples of the poses that we can have Bob Ross in. We can have him looking at the camera, painting. I think it would be pretty cool to have him do one when he's beating the devil out of the brush. It's one of the funnest parts of the show. So without further ado, let's open this guy up and take a closer look at him. Let's go ahead and get started. I've got myself my almighty pocket knife to take the tape off of this box so that we can get a closer look at it. You know, Bob Ross has really had a big resurgence in popularity over the past few years as being one of the first unintentional ASMR kings. I remember growing up, I would come home from school and I would turn on PBS and I will see Bob painting and I always found them to be very relaxing and most like a lot of other people looking at Bob always made me feel relaxed and sleepy afterwards not because he was boring but because he was just so darn fascinating so this is how it looks when the box is off, but we still have some work to do. There's some twist ties and some rubber bands that we need to cut off. If you would like to see some of Bob's work in The Joy of Painting, there's a couple of surefire ways to do so. One of them is just by going to his YouTube channel where they have every episode of The Joy of Painting and plus some other material. And then you can also find him on his official Twitch channel. I believe it's Twitch TV slash Bob Ross where they also play The Joy of Painting on a very regular basis. Finally got Bob out of the packaging. This is what he looks like. We'll get a better, closer look at him in a minute, but I just wanted you to see what he looks like. So on this paint bucket, they did a very nice job. It looks like there's a lot of paint that's just been worked into the metal over the years. Now, of course, this bucket right here is plastic, but it's done up to look like metal. And when you look at the top, you can see that there is what I'm assuming to be paint thinner or the appearance of paint thinner inside of this bucket that Bob would use to clean his brushes before beating the brush on the side of the easel. So here's a look at Bob's palette, which contains a lot of the colors that he used throughout the years. And if you're a fan of the joy of painting, you've become quite familiar with them too. Colors such as titanium white, sap green, midnight black, bright red, Van Dyke brown, yellow ochre, phthalo blue, and others. And here's a closer look at Bob's easel with the painting on it. Now, I believe that this particular painting is from season two, episode one. And the name of the painting is Meadow Lake. And then we have the tools of the trade. We have two brushes, which is going to be the two inch brush. I believe the smaller one is the one inch brush. And of course, the palette knife. Now, one of the things that makes this figure stand out for most 
are the cloth goods, and it definitely helps it to stand out on your shelf amongst your other figures, which are usually adorned in all plastic. So because this is mass produced and using cloth goods, it may look a little oversized in some areas. It may look a little tight in some areas. It may not look completely uniform, but that's just one of the things that you get with cloth goods figures. It's just a little bit of a trade-off, but all in all, it's still a very nice thing to have. Mob's articulation is very similar to what we see with other NECA figures. Now, I would not consider this an action figure by any means, but he does have a range of motion that will lend itself very well to posing him in depictions of him painting. So just for example, you can see that we can lift his arm up pretty high. That's not as high as it can go, but you can see the range of motion there. And then he also has the swivels he has remove this brush for a second and then he also has uh, articulation in his wrists that you can bend forward and back and then you can bring the arm and you can rotate it to get higher on the palette or lower on the palette whatever you want to do and of course it's going to move forward and back legs you don't really need to worry about too much you're just going to need them to stand straight up but if for one reason or another you wanted Bob to be doing the splits and he just dropped his almighty palette. Sorry, Bob. You can get his legs to spread like that, you know, but it's only if you just want to have a little bit of extra fun with Bob, get him into some goofy situations. But if you're just going to keep it pretty standard, the articulation that he has is more than enough to get those nice painting poses. Now, usually when I do reviews, I talk about attention to detail. And there's one very important detail on this figure that NECA has acknowledged and they incorporated. And it is all on Bob's left hand. If you notice his index finger, part of it is missing. And that's because Bob Ross actually had a missing finger. Apparently it was cut off during an unfortunate sawing accident when he was younger. So if you get this figure and you feel that, oh, they messed up. He's missing part of his finger. No, that's actually true to life. That's something that you didn't necessarily notice during the joy of painting. And it's just one of those fun Bob facts, even though the act of losing a finger is not all that fun. I think NECA did a very good job on the face scope for Bob. It really does look like him. A lot of the pictures that we've seen, I would say that this is Bob's look from maybe I would say the mid years of the joy of painting, not quite the very young years where he will wear like those uh, shaded aviator like glasses. So I would say somewhere in between the middle. And of course he has that nice full Afro going all the way around that he kept just for us. So thank you, Bob. That's the iconic look that we all know him for. And another small but appreciated detail is the veins that he has going through his hands. They could have very easily left out the veins on hands because it's not necessarily crucial, but they put them in there and uh, I definitely do appreciate that. And of course, this is just one of the many poses that you can put Bob in, although most of them you're probably going to have him painting. I got him with the two inch brush now, but of course you can also use the palette knife or the one inch brush. It really just depends on what you want to do. But this is just going to be the standard pose most of the time for me. So that was my look at the Bob Ross Naked Toys figure. It's really a no brainer for those who are fans of Bob and want to have a little something on their shelves to remind them of the great times the joy of painting has brought them. And I'm very happy to have it. And I think that you should too. So that's all for me. So as Bob would say, until next time, happy painting and God bless my friends.